So uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm really delighted to welcome you to today's international marketing panel. My name is Anna Helm, and I'm the faculty director of the uh, International uh, Center, for Interna Center for International Business Education and Research, the GW Cyber, here at uh, George Washington University School of Business. I'm also the um, instructor for international marketing management here at GW, among other courses that I also teach. And we're joined by those students in that class, but also other students throughout GWSB and GW as a whole. So just a few words first about GW Cyber. GW Cyber is one of 15 such centers <clears throat> across the United States funded by the US Department of Education with a broad mandate to increase US competitiveness abroad. To this effect, we support cutting edge international business research. We provide outreach programming for the business and policy communities and also design and offer innovative educational experiences for students. A cornerstone of our programming revolves around preparing students for careers in international business and also related fields in order to help meet US firms demands for competent globally minded talent. Today's event is an example of such an initiative. <clears throat> We are so excited to have the opportunity to bring together an amazing group of GWSB alumni who are here today to speak about what it really means to work in international marketing and to share their advice with our current students. Every single one of our panelists took my international marketing management course at one point in time. Uh, and sometimes they actually took other classes as well. So it's, uh, it's really impressive to see all the things that they have accomplished between then and, and now. And for me as a faculty, it's really a wonderful feeling to be able to connect my current international marketing students with former students who took the course, uh, in this case, between 2009 and 2013. So just in terms of some of the logistics uh, before we move along, there will be a panel discussion that will take place now uh, till until pretty much 1.30 or so. And then after that, we're gonna go into breakout rooms. <clears throat> after the breakout rooms, we'll come back and actually do a little bit of a debriefing, uh, you know, some last advice from the panelists and kind of recapturing what was actually going on in the breakout rooms. So that's gonna be the pass for today. At the end of the panel discussion, depending a little bit about how much time we have, we will uh, do some Q&A from students um, and uh, I will call on a few students from my class who have prepared questions. Uh, if your question wasn't picked, feel free to definitely bring the question back to the breakout room and to your specific uh, uh, alum and uh, ask them there. So let me now just <clears throat> say a few words about the panelists. And uh, note that it will be very brief because you all have the bios. You got them in the invitation, but also in the email that went out uh, to give you the Zoom link. So there is an attachment with the bio. So Feel free to bring that document up so you can get more of the details, but I wanna give as much time as possible to the panelists. So first out, we have uh, Nick Pahia. He is uh, working for Facebook. He, he came to me at DW and was a student in both international marketing and also in foreign market analysis. He has a very impressive career uh, working with Amazon and Facebook and is now involved in some very uh, timely components in managing the different Facebook brands. So welcome, Nick, it's great to have you here. And then we have Caitlin Mermelstein. She is working uh, with BidSwitch. <clears throat> we just talked before the panel and it's, she's really on the cutting edge of what's going on in uh, ad tech and things like that. So we're delighted to have her speak a little bit more of that. Uh, she, uh, I remember her back from, I think it was, um, uh, basically, uh, maybe the, I think, uh, Caitlin, the uh, fall of 2011 when you took international marketing. So, uh, and then we have Lisa Darger. Uh, she is here. She's the brand manager from Bail Resorts. And uh, she also took international marketing with me in uh, spring of 2013. Uh, very impressed by the things that she's done and also uh, as you noted from a bio about you know working overseas in Croatia for example and having study abroad experience that uh, probably formed a lot of your career Lisa. Uh, then we have Melanie Hoffman. 
She is the strategy manager for McDonald's. And uh, we noted that in, in a talk beforehand that she's really been with McDonald's for quite a while and had a couple of different positions there. So we're, of course, delighted. And um, in international marketing, that's actually one of the topics when we look at the, the marketing mix. Uh, we actually use McDonald's as an example of a company that really has a, a very sophisticated way of managing that across the globe. So delighted to hear more from um, from you as well. So then we have Andrew Hoare, um, and he was taking international marketing and also foreign market analysis, my international marketing consulting course back in 2013, actually the inaugural uh, uh, class uh, working with Lufthansa Airlines. So delighted to have him back. He works with Sotheby's and he's going to talk a little bit more about his experiences there. Last but not least, we have Evan Katz. And um, he has also had a very impressive career working with Ogilvy & Mather, E-Trade, uh, Bookings, and uh, again, has a lot of experience from international marketing. And all of these are just uh, kind of the pedigree of DW, what the WSB uh, can offer uh, in terms of the students who, who combine international business and marketing. And of course, that's one of the things that our students are really interested in to hear more about like how do you bring together marketing and international business all of you have at least one of those um all of you i think were in ib but also most of you had a dual concentration in marketing as well so it's going to be really interesting i think um you know students will really uh, benefit from hearing your perspectives here so we are now going to go to our first question and just to get everybody kind of familiar with uh, you guys, we wanted to ask you for one uh, memory that stands out from your time at UW. I'm going to go down the line and uh, start first uh, kind of in alphabetical order, so to speak, with, with Lisa. So Lisa, do you want to go ahead and, uh, and give us a, a memory? I would be happy to. Um, something that stands out a lot for, for me out of coming out of GW was my time with uh, Delta Sigma Pi, so DSP, the uh, co-ed business fraternity um, that definitely helped, that I was in with uh, actually Melanie and Andrew, two of the other panelists, and it definitely helped just shape a lot of my viewpoints, a lot of my soft skills that I use in my day-to-day -day job, um, as well as some of the best friends and connections that I have coming out of GW, so, uh, and very specifically, we always had initiation every semester, and it was a great day of working really hard and, and then having a little bit of fun afterwards, so. Great, great, yeah. So it is really important to not just think about the academics, but really having a full life around that and building your network with, you know, the best people you can find. So that's a great way to do it. Thank you, Lisa. And then what about Melanie? Okay, so I had a lot of ideas for this favorite memory of GW, but I think I picked something that's unique, uniqueer to GW. Um, and I think my favorite memory was just my overall experience studying abroad. I did an exchange program at the London School of Economics for a year, um, which was at the time something I was pushing myself outside of my comfort zone to go away to another school for a whole year. But that was probably um, my favorite experience overall memory and just the support from the GW teams, like my teachers and all the other faculty that encouraged me to do it. Uh, I think that's unique in that you're, you're really encouraged to have those experiences and being interested in working in international marketing and business. That was a really great experience. Great. Yeah. And that's definitely something we encourage everybody to do if they can to find out a way either through short-term study abroad or long-term to really get out there and be a little uncomfortable and really learn about yourself a lot, learn about really American culture in comparison to other cultures as well. So it's all around a really great experience. Uh, thank you, Melanie. What about Andrew? Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, so this is not a paid promotion, but I do, <laughs> I, I do have to say that I found that um, Professor Helms' real client consulting course was a, a real GW highlight for me. Um, my particular class, as I'm sure a lot of you um, have seen, um, you know, some, some uh, promotional materials about it, but uh, was with Lufthansa. And I personally found that that was a, um, a unique experience in exposing me to um, 
ways that businesses were thinking, um, how they were framing um, kind of business issues and a lot of the data that was available uh, to us. So uh, I'm grateful for that experience. And I know it, uh, it was personally very helpful for me uh, as I took my first foray into the, the working world. Great. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. I think that that's uh, great to hear. And I did not pay you to to say that, but, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I think it just the you know kind of flexing your muscle in the real world before you graduate is really definitely very beneficial. And the consulting course with real clients obviously gives you that opportunity. And uh, so um, yeah, I'm glad you you do appreciate it and see coming back. You know that that was something that helped you in some way in your career. So excellent. Thank you. Now, what about Evan? Yeah, so I had uh, two that came to mind immediately. Um, I uh, one, you know, one was a sad one with uh, you know the financial crisis of two thousand eight. Um, I was sitting in Newhall, and quite frankly, uh, I don't know what Newhall is called right now. I think it's Amsterdam Hall. Um, but seeing you know Lehman Brothers or Bear Stearns like literally go bankrupt, and, um, you know, what the implications were for the global economy, and then going to class, you know, the next week, and actually, like, talking about these things was a really memorable experience. Um, uh, another one was the election of Barack Obama. There's just this energy about being in Washington, D.C. I think, you know, a lot of students today can feel that as well with our current uh, election. Um, and then lastly, just the recruiting process at GWSB. So Professor Helm mentioned, you know, I started my career at Ogilvy. Um, that was through a recruitment process at GWSB where Ogilvy came and spoke at the school. Um, you know, the Career Center really helped prepare me for the interview process. And so that kind of launched my career in marketing and, and uh, always very thankful for that. That's really great to hear. I know the team in the Career Center really works hard on trying to help students uh, really, you know, be successful going out into their first, uh, you know, part of their, their career. It's so important to to have that kind of support structure in place. And of course, the only at UW moments, kind of the feeling of being in DC, unfortunately right now we're not really there, but uh, well, some of us are, but um, you know, that is really, you know, their special moment. And I know others can probably recount other moments of that caliber. So thank you, Evan. Uh, what about Nick? Uh, it's gonna be a combination of everyone here, but I would say like, you know, I came to GW and I, I knew that I wasn't someone who maybe learned from books, but I really needed to get the experience. So I really took advantage of like the internships and really tried to figure out like what was or wasn't, you know, I, I also wrote down like a memory was 2012. Like I, I remember deliberately studying for a final and they had announced that Obama got his second term and we all threw our books and we're like, you know, screw it. Like we're going to go we're going to go to the White House. We're going to go celebrate. And, and that's like a memory I remember, like people chanting, people like cheering. And then we have to like go back and like take a final in like eight hours. It's just, it was something for me, like sort of the, the perspective of like, you can meet people, you can go, to, you know, learn what you want or don't want in a community and also be as close to sort of timely world events, such as like a U.S. election. I, I felt like sort of shaped me and, and brought like a positive experience to at least my experience at GW. Yeah, that's wonderful to hear. And I, I do like this perspective too, that there's so much to learn outside of the books. If you just take the opportunity, if you dip your nose in the books, and of course, as a faculty member, I want you to do that, but I also want you to learn with peers and, you know, try to, to capture all the richness of experiences that are around you. So um, you know, definitely take that opportunity to do what, what Nick did with his uh, peers and friends at the time. So, okay. So now what about uh, Caitlin? Um, so one of my favorite things about going to school at GW was that I met one of my closest friends in my first week of classes. So we started parallel careers together. And instead of being so cutthroat and competitive, we actually are super supportive of each other and bounce ideas off of each other. And it's nice to have somebody that I worked with throughout school and just has a similar but challenging thinking that helps us both grow. So we met at our first week of classes and now we're planning her bachelorette party. So it's just really nice to make such supportive friends. Yeah, no, I, I think that's wonderful. And I see that a lot. You know, I've been at UW now since 2006, and I do see 
a lot of camaraderie developing among students. And I think also I, I just just thinking about the, you know, my students now are doing this uh, country manager simulation and it's very competitive. Some of you would have taken part in that and it's very competitive. And but now we come to this phase where we always try to kind of share between teams and try to break down the level of competitiveness that is always there with business students, right? That business is a competitive sphere. So um, I really enjoy the fact that you focused on, on some of that collaboration and building community and building friends as opposed to just a cutthroat. So I think that's unique to GW. I have, in, in I have ways. the same answer. Uh, I met my wife at GWSB, so uh, <laughs> that's 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 also a good thing. And please tell her I mentioned that uh, when I gave my answer. We will say that that was your special moment. So that's all that's, that anybody's going to hear. <laughs> okay, great. So now let's move along. Thank you for those perspectives, and uh, you know it's just wonderful to hear all this. So now we're going to go to Evan actually, and I'm going to ask him if he could please exemplify. What types of jobs exist in international marketing? I'm sure the students are curious about that. Yeah, yeah, I could probably talk for an entire hour just about this topic alone. And, and I think the good thing is we have a lot of representation from different areas of, of international marketing on, on this panel. Um, but with everything, you know, it's a spectrum. It could be a spectrum from, you know, global roles to regional roles to B2B roles to B2C roles. And I think, you know, um, there's so many different elements that I could get into, whether it's, you know, brand marketing, performance marketing, consumer marketing. But I think one of the, and we'll get to advice at the end, one of the pieces of, of advice that I would give is like really trying to understand um, how broad the world of international marketing is and, and trying to find what place you want to have in it. And it really goes from, from you know, uh, kind of master of none, jack of all trades to being like a specialist in a particular area. Um, so whether that, you know, means you want to become a specialist in machine learning and data science and, you know, that's fantastic. And, but it takes a lot of work to like start to build a career in that area versus like my path was much more traditional. I started at a big brand agency and account management to learn and understand how this world works. And then now I've started to get more and more experience to kind of add to my repertoire, but, you know, uh, I would say, think about the different spectrums, right? So agency to internal brand positions, strategic to executional, you know, um, uh, yeah, creative and media, ad tech and, and you know, actual products. Uh, and, and like I mentioned, like, you know, B2B, B2C, these are all like very high level ideas of, of like areas you could focus on. Um, and then you, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. You can add them all up in many different ways. And so um, we'll talk more about that and certainly in the breakout session, if you want to dive deeper into that, but uh, it's such a huge spectrum that a big task is like just kind of figuring out and ingesting what this world is and deciding what place you want to have in it. That's right. Yeah. And I think it's really important for students to realize that, you know, marketing is really an open field and is really bound to the deepest strategy of companies, right? Marketers are really important people, even though sometimes we tend to think about them as you know, more of a superficial field. We think about you know, the touch points we have as people, individuals with marketing, but I think that's a really critical point that it can be so many things. So Melanie, I'm gonna ask you the same question about kind of exemplifying uh, you know, what really international marketing is. I mean, I think I, I echo that there's so many, like marketing is such a generic word, almost any job ever could be considered a marketer's job. So there's really like the consumer communications versus, you know, internal operations. There's, there's so much that drives the marketing, what a marketing job is. So I agree encouraging all students to think about where your passions lie because there's so much within that that you can do um and in terms of taking that international there's a lot of room for growth which i think is the best part of working in international marketing is that you don't have to get it right the first time you can take a position that you find interesting and learn more about the industry and the role of marketing in the world um and go from there and if you have you know international interests which i'm assuming most students on this call do um, it's, it's the 
the limits are like endless at an international marketing company. Um, so I work in the U.S. business right now, but I work for a global company and I have the ability to, you know, create a career path that is in a different country or on a global team that oversees a lot of different business units across different markets. Um, so I think that echoing what Evan said, if you are passionate about social media, then there can be a social job, social marketing management job for you in the U.S., in Germany, and, you know, at, at a company that crosses all of those different countries. Um, so I think just being in an international world opens up the ability to specialize in a type of marketing that you like, as well as a like consumer environment or another type of culture that you find interesting and, and learning about the adaptations and how things have to be different to work in different environments is what I always have loved about international marketing. Um, so it's pretty, it's cool to challenge your thinking and, you know, not always assume that your, your experience is your customer's experience. Um, which is like one of the key principles of marketing. Okay, that's that's great. Wonderful perspective. So again, uh, the world's your oyster in international marketing in a, in a way, right? So excellent. So now I'm going to go to Nick for the next question. So I am going to ask him to describe what a typical workday looks like, especially as pertaining to international marketing. And, and again, in his uh, concrete life, what can it look like? My concrete life. So I'm... I right now represent in my my day to day function is really doing the communication strategy for the Facebook corporate brand and it it lies in two ways. One is that we're trying to build, you know, build our reputation in, in countries in which like we may not be so hot in like, for example, the US like people are TikTok's very hot, you know, there are other apps that people are going to people have a negative perception. So we may focus there. And on a global perspective, like, you know, I focus on things such as finding information or sending people, you know, giving people the breath that they can feel comfortable in, in obtaining it in whatever app that they use, whether it's the Facebook app, WhatsApp, Instagram, et cetera. So from my lens, I, if I build off of like Evan's example, I'm at the corporate, you know, global level and I talk to my counterparts in local markets. So I focus more on like, say Brazil or India or say like the UK and understand from their local level, like what are some of the habits or what are things that people are talking about to say climate change or vaccines and how quickly are those things changing? And where I work from like, because my stakeholders actually Mark Zuckerberg is really just pivoting my corporate message. Like this is the strategy. These are the targets that we're going after. This is why it's important to do this. Um, and this is like sort of the plan that we're going to deploy, not only domestically, but also internationally when relevant. So my job really is, and, and to build off the other two points, it's like a very macro view, you know, very unbiased, very just taking sort of the information and sort of giving the Chinese menu of like, this is sort of what the state of the union is on a global perspective and our POV, but, you know, also for marketing, it is subjective and it is like, there are points of views and where local views are more relevant and more necessary and where like that's the key that I need with my my local counterparts in each market to bring that perspective forward. And where I work a lot on Zoom actually now, now more than ever to really, you know, understand that and be an advocate for them when I when I go to my st my stakeholders here. Great, great. That's fascinating to, to hear. Um... I'm going to go to Andrew for the same question. What does your day look like when it comes to international marketing activities? Yeah, so Evan mentioned an, an interesting phrase that really resonated with me. He said strategic to executional, and I feel that that is a, a, the perfect um, kind of description of, of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis at Sotheby's at least. So um, I, I'll give an example of the old master paintings division. Um, at a more macro level, it's about addressing some of their longer lead strategic goals over the next five to 10 years, for example. So some of those goals look like 
Um, you know, how do we communicate with growth markets uh, and, and, you know, not only what literal language we need to be translating into, but also how are we making content a little bit more interesting? For example, um, Western old master pictures may not resonate as much with Chinese audiences. So what are we doing to kind of develop content that um, kind of helps bridge that cultural gap? Um, similarly, you know, we're going through a huge wealth transfer in this country, particularly. So um, we're moving from uh, you know, the one generation passing on assets to another. So, you know, as these works move onto the open market, um, will there be a market to sustain this? And what are we doing to kind of educate that next generation of buyers? Um, and another thing as well is, you know, what are we doing to push out um, kind of lower priced works, not just the masterpieces. So um, those are kind of some of the longer lead uh, projects that need to be worked on and, and kind of funded. Um, and then on a sale by sale basis, which is when it comes to um, you know, our, our key offerings, um, it, my day to day is, is really everything from uh, coordinating kind of like global campaigns and moments. Uh, for example, we have a, a major uh, Botticelli painting and a major Rembrandt up for sale. Um, this coming January. So, um, you know, just today actually we had a, a big press call in Amsterdam where we uh, brought the painting to Rembrandt Studio where, um, where it's purported to have been painted um, to create a press moment for, um, you know, for that local market. Um, so, you know, we have a number of institutional buyers and uh, potential um, continental European interests. So that's a great way to kind of um, drive attention. Um, and then when it gets closer to the sale date, uh, my responsibilities mostly get very tactical when it comes to how are we allocating budget to our digital campaigns, for example. Um, what are we doing to make sure uh, that we're shifting resources in a way that makes sense so all people who need to know do know about the upcoming sale offerings um, and that we're, uh, we're tracking their, their activity for follow-up. So it's really, uh, it's really um, a lot of everything from, from super macro to super executional. Great, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of, I mean, just from what we've heard so far, just uh, sounds like really very exciting jobs that you're all involved, involved in for sure. So uh, thank you. Let's go now to Lisa. So I wanna ask you what you enjoy the most about your work in international marketing. What is that is exciting about your job? Absolutely. So um, I'll, I'm actually going to reference the position that I had prior to the one I'm in, in now about what I found the most um, exciting about that position was being on a global team that coordinated with um, all of the regions that my old company had. And what I really enjoyed most was just that connection with my colleagues around the globe. Uh, there wasn't a day that didn't go by in that position where I didn't speak to at least one other person on a different continent. So it's just really exciting and interesting to hear about what someone um, is, is doing in London this weekend or what the weather is truly like in Sydney. Um, and, and learning those adaptations, I think Melanie touched on that about how you have to adapt to the local market and what I needed to do at the global le level to ensure that they had the right tools um, and, the, and the right content and the right branding, but the, the flexibility to use those cultural adaptations to uh, find those local photos that would resonate better. Uh, you know, when they're swapping out assets and campaigns. And then, of course, uh, you can't hate on the travel that sometimes comes with an international marketing job. So uh, with my previous company, I was fortunate enough to go to three different continents in three years, and that was just always exciting. And going to the local offices in those countries was great. One of those trips, I actually ran into Andrew in London, and it was um, quite the moment that we had <laughs> realizing that we were both in London that day. And so that was really fun. Uh, so you can't hate on that part of international marketing at all. That's right. Yeah, I think a lot of people who work in or want to work in IB, study IB, really want to do some of that travel. And of course, it's an amazing opportunity to, uh, to see the world and engage with people across different cultures. So absolutely. So uh, Caitlin, I want to ask you the same question. What about uh, why are you uh, excited about your job? What is the most fun aspect of it? 
Sure. So as Professor Helm mentioned, I work in the tech side of advertising. So my company is essentially a think tank for ad tech. So we develop a lot of the underlying technologies that power your ads today that you don't even think about. So our company is headquartered in London and we have offices in New York, Germany, Singapore, Russia. Um, so my job is essentially to act as a translator between product engineering, data science and sales teams. So how do we take these really complex topics and extract the points that matter? So essentially, how do we take chaos and make it less chaotic? So a lot of times this comes down to cross-cultural communication and quick thinking. And then tying that into my favorite task for my job, I really love event planning in different countries. So in ad tech, three of the biggest events are in France, Germany, and Las Vegas. So for these events, we want to make them exciting and think of ways to get attention from new clients or prospects and also keep our existing clients excited. So prior to the pandemic, we like to do a lot of experiential marketing. So it was my job to make sure that everything went well. So a quick anecdote, we had a huge event where we would take about 200 of our top clients from London to the event in Germany. So we would rent out half of a train and coincidentally the the event's called De Mexico, but it actually is in Germany. So we would take them on this train and we'd stop in Belgium and we'd do a happy hour and showcase our technology. So we need to just make sure everything runs. So of course, the day of the event, you do all of the scenario running, of course, ahead of time, but something always goes wrong. So our train was canceled. So for the rest of the day, there was a strike. We didn't know how to get 200 clients from Belgium to the Germany for the event. So we kind of had to think through in the moment, like, how do we make sure that our clients are okay? What do we tell our clients? What are, how are our clients gonna react? How do we protect the brand? So it's a lot of pedaling underwater, but maintaining that cool face to the clients to make sure they don't realize how much you're doing behind the scenes to ensure a successful event. And then it ends up being so successful that people emailed us after asking to participate next year. So just keeping that calm, cool demeanor, but also quick problem solving would be my favorite part of my job. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's really lovely to hear. And I, I think that is really critical for people who work not only in international marketing, but in international business that you have to be able to think on your feet and come up with solutions and kind of go with the flow and just be ready for, for action that you might not have anticipated when yeah. you started, right? So I think that's a really great point. So I think it might take a little bit of that personality in a sense to feel comfortable and be successful in international business, international marketing generally. Great. So, Caitlin, I wanted to stay with you, and I wanted to ask you how your GW experience helped you launch into your career and then arrive at your current position. Sure. So, um, my two favorite classes at GW were Professor Helms' International Business class and the National Student Advertising Campaign class. So, both of those classes were tough, but because you have so many real-world simulations, you're prepared for the work ahead of you. So I think those classes helped me understand the importance of teamwork and in-depth research. And then you get to get hands-on with all the different aspects. So how do you write a survey? How do you write copy? How do you design an ad? Um, so the company I started my first job at was a small and more intimate ad tech company. So I interviewed at agencies, uh, brands, and ad tech. And ad tech was the most appealing because sometimes the teams I was looking at were a lot smaller, so I'd get to try a lot of different hats on versus going for a larger company. Sometimes they have niche roles, so you're only focusing on one aspect of the business. So from there, I learned my favorite parts were product marketing and events. So when I was looking for a next job, I went into a location data position that combined both of those. So I got to use my product marketing and events. So all of that and everything I do in my day to day, I really took away from the class that I took at GW. So how to build out a full marketing plan, um, how to strategize who to approach with a product, how do you launch a product? Um, and then the more tactical, like, do you want to create a social strategy? Who should you approach with it? How do you procure a speaking engagement? How do you write articles? So I think all of that I took away from those two classes. That's wonderful. And I like your, your idea here also about you know, getting a job maybe with a smaller shop at first, because you really don't know for sure when you graduate what you're going to do. So testing different things in a smaller firm is actually a really good way to fairly quickly understand what you really have the passion and, and skill set for. So I think yeah, that's really a good, good thing to take away for the students also. So uh, I'm going to go to Nick for the same question. 
Yeah. So I, when I started at GW, I thought I wanted to do politics. Um, and I actually was interning on the Hill, just maybe like probably other people as well. So I pivoted quite a bit and like, because I didn't know what I wanted. And I felt like the practical experiences, you know, whether it was meeting people or whether it was the career center connecting me with people or some of the classes, even like, you know, Caitlin was explaining, like we were in the same um, capital advertising class for marketing, um, the foreign market analysis class that, you know, you were able to get practical experiences, but I felt like it was also helpful to have something tangible to explain your thinking and explain your thought process in your first job and going out, um, like out there. So for me, I actually had met someone at a, at, not at a, uh, a career event at GW, but it was in New York. It was someone that I was connected through at the Career Center, and it was with an agency that represented Delta Airlines. And I was able actually to take the foreign market analysis class with like Lufthansa and as well as like some of the advertising stuff to really explain to a group that was looking for someone who was sort of a, an agency that was looking for a consultant, but also interested in advertising, how I could be of value. And, you know, I, I can't stress enough, like taking some of these courses that, you know, you are in these group projects or you're able to take some of this and explain your thinking is going to help you like move through the door for me, it was a way to open and, and, and help like Delta do a cost analysis, which was literally the same thing actually I did in your class, <laughs> Dr. Helm, like explain to them like the value of giving free flight entertainment um, like on airlines. And I don't know if you guys remember in 2012, 2013, we were all paying $5 a movie. Now it's free and we take it for granted, but that is like what I spent my first year. And I, I don't think that without these classes or the ability to talk to other people like at GW or be able to this internship experience, it would not have like opened this door and, and sort of coincidentally be able to be an airliner that I like had my first job with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I have to say to Nick, this just from my perspective, you know, I feel like it, it's worth it to put the effort into making these kinds of classes happen because obviously it's a lot of work to try to you know, get clients involved and manage those relationships and guide the students is a totally different, you know, job for a faculty to do that, those kinds of classes. But I hear all the time students who come back and they had had an interview and talked about the project they did in foreign market analysis or even country manager, the simulation, yeah. right? And, and it just piques the interest of employers, honestly. And I, I know this, not just from you, Nick, but from other students as well. So and I think it's unique to also to, G, not to cut you off, but like, you know, for GW, like being mm -hmm. able to interview people on the other end that are starting their career, many people don't come with that real world experience. That's, that I think is also something fairly unique to GW that I think, you know, take advantage of it if you have the opportunity or even figure out how to make it happen, you know, like, I know you want that class that might fit that 1245 slot right now, but like maybe push it the next semester if you can take a class like foreign market analysis or something else that might pique your interest and might help you in the long term. Yeah, no, I agree. And again, that's why it's so amazing to work at UW, right? And engage with students who really are interested in preparing themselves for real work life. So uh, excellent. Evan, why don't we go to you with the same question? Yeah, absolutely. I mentioned at the top that uh, I was lucky enough to start my career on the agency side at Ogilvy and um, just speaking directly to like the opportunity to try a lot of different things. Um, so Ogilvy has this program. I honestly don't know if they still have this program, especially with the pandemic. They might, I don't know, uh, but it's called the Associates Program and it's a rotational program for a year. Um, where you rotate through different areas of the business. And so that could be account management, strategic planning, analytics, and then usually like a, a mystery rotation of, you know, it could be uh, consulting, entertainment, marketing, any one of the other kind of uh, groups at Ogilvy. And so, yeah, I, you know, unfortunately, like I didn't have the opportunity to do cap ad, a lot of other friends of mine did. And like, it was also this very competitive kind of uh, uh, interview process. Um, but just to taking like experiences from GW holistically into that interview process, like, yes, it was marketing classes, but they were also looking for people who had, you know, 
exposure to international business thinking or even like uh, things outside of business. I took a lot of art history classes and even though I can't draw for my life, like, I don't know, that, that just helped me come across as like a more well-rounded candidate, someone that's able to think creatively, understands like, you know, I was very into architecture and I always thought I wanted to be like an architect. And, you know, and I kind of fell into this world of advertising, but the reason I did was, you know, if, if GW didn't invite Ogilvy to campus, like I would have never gone. Um, I, I thought I actually want, at the time wanted to be a consultant and, you know, was interviewing at like Deloitte and stuff like that. But it was just an opportunity to, to solve business problems in a more creative way. And I felt like GW prepared me for that with a lot of like case studies and group presentations. And like, yeah, it's annoying. There's always like that one person who doesn't want to do their work or whatever. But like, it really does prepare you for the real world because you're going to have to work with other people, whether it's creative people, you know, more um, analytical people and knowing how to work with different personality types you know, we talk a lot about EQ and, and like really learning how to be an adult in a business sense. Um, GW really teaches you that because you're kind of forced into these scenarios. And, and even today, like, you know, we're doing this over Zoom and we're going through this unprecedented pandemic, like to do marketing in that world is also difficult, just as it is to go to school in that world. So like, you know, these are still opportunities where you're going to get experience and you're going to learn how to figure it out. Like, don't get me wrong, you're going to get to your first day of work and not know what the hell is going on. But like having this experience of, of like figuring it out and working with other people is, is critical. And a lot of people don't get that in their in their kind of uh, uh, college education, whether they study business or, or other things. I just think GW does a really good job to prepare you for that. Yeah, that's really great to hear. And of course, we, we all know about the, the group work aspect and it's challenging, but also Nice to hear from you from the real world that it does pay off to have these experiences. And I also love the fact that, you know, you have this variety of interests that really can come in. You know, you might be interested in the liberal arts or, you know, politics or whatever it is and be able to then bring in that and be that well-rounded candidate in your job search. But I mean, also look at Andrew, like you could study art history and then pull that right into international business. Like, yes. And you're prepped on both sides of it. So exactly. Um, yeah, whatever you're passionate about, like you really can do marketing about anything. If you're passionate about sports, if you're passionate about, you know, e-commerce, whatever, like you can do it. Uh, and there is a niche for you in, in this kind of world of marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Thank you, Evan. So um, we are nearing the point where we need to go to the breakout rooms, but I want to take a comment each from uh, Andrew, Melanie and Lisa, just about, you know, one thing that really paid off in terms of how GW prepared you. So, and then after that, we're gonna to go to the breakout rooms and save the advice until the end. Do you want me to start? Yeah, that's fine. Or, go ahead. Yep. Okay, so there were there's three things that GW did that really prepared me well for my first job. I also started an ad agency. I think everyone falls into an ad agency job not meaning to get there. And it's like the best foundational job in marketing you could ever have because you, you to what Lisa and um, other people were saying, you touch so many pieces and then you can narrow your interest. So the first thing GW did was force everyone to do group projects all the time because that's how you work. And other colleges don't have that type of environment for classes. So people have to work by themselves and truly in marketing, you can't do anything alone. So embrace those group project experiences, learn how to manage and lead teams that aren't motivated because you're gonna have that in your real world environment too. Second thing is like almost a choose your own adventure structure to the degree where you pick what you want to focus on later and pick different lots of classes because that's the same thing in marketing. You'll get into an agency and you can specialize in promotions, career development, strategy. Like there's, you have to have choose your own adventure once you're in your career as well. Um, there's a lot of similarities between the degree program at GW. I started in finance, ends up in marketing because I noticed the classes I was picking were like consumer behavior and not like portfolio analysis. That's what interested me. That happens the same way once you get into your first marketing job. When you go too deep too fast, you might end up in a rut that you're not as passionate about. So I would say picking a, I picked a very broadly kind of broad job to start in so I could choose my own adventure and my career. And then the third thing is like 
being from Chicago and being in DC, take advantage of any internship you can possibly get. Like I interned at the World Wildlife Fund because I love animals. And I didn't really have like a clear direction. I just wanted to be a part of that organization because I was passionate about that. And I ended up being in their licensing department that helped me get my first job doing licensing for Happy Meal at McDonald's. So I came in with way more intern ex- ex- internship and professional experience than anybody else that I was competing against as a, from a candidate because I had those opportunities being in D.C. So I think those are the three ways that GW really helped me be prepared to come in more experienced than my peers and excel in, in my career. Wow, that's excellent. Yeah, I love the story of, of the licensing. I mean, that's, again, also the, the kind of the thread here about you know, doing the kinds of things you, you love to do and learn and then apply and transfer those skills to other areas. So uh, amazing. What about Andrew, a few words, and then Lisa? Sure. So um, I know just kind of all like hard skills aside, I felt like GW really focused on developing um, EQ. And I think especially in a, an international business program, it's really critical. I mean, I know I really appreciated the services that were provided for study abroad. Um, I knew I always had this, this kind of childhood dream of, you know, this kind of like international businessman kind of idea. So in order, I, I kind of was able to live that out when I did my study abroad in Brussels and I got to work at ING, the Dutch bank. Um, so, um, you know, and I was, I felt prepared for that, although it was a bit of a jolt culturally, um, because GW gave me the confidence to ask questions and kind of gave me the framework for international competency, really. Um, and that's, you know, uh, to the credit of a lot of my international, um, I almost said colleagues, my, my, my fellow international students, I should say. Um, but I think most of all, the most important thing is, uh, is an emphasis on unique experiences, because I think that, um, at least for me, my interest didn't necessarily um, align with any one track. In fact, I had originally come to GW as a, a French and art history major, um, and I kind of found a way to combine my interest in art history and business um, I, I think with the confidence that I probably wouldn't have had if I uh, was involved with another um, program. So uh, I'm grateful for kind of the um, um, the confidence and the, the kind of ability to, to kind of choose your own adventure as Melanie was mentioning. Great, thank you so much. And uh, now we have last but not least, Lisa, before we uh, break out into our uh, individual discussions in the breakout rooms. First, I'll keep it brief. I think uh, my fellow panelists have done a really good job on touching on so many things. Uh, the two things I would probably double down on is, is one, the, the soft skills of being in group projects all the time, as well as the presentation skills that we were forced to do over and over and over. And you would be, uh, you'll be surprised when you go into the working world and you'll see people that do not have presentation skills um, and did not learn them in college. And how much further ahead that just puts you right off the bat to have those skills, even in an interview. And then even as you start presenting uh, to directors or you know, it, even higher level, I felt very prepared to do that off the bat. Uh, the second thing I would really emphasize is, is internships and study abroad um, and getting that experience abroad 100% helped me stand out on my resume, uh, applying to jobs and it still does today. Um, you know, Being able to have multiple cities and multiple countries on my resume I've always, I've never had an interviewer not comment on it or a recruiter in a phone screen, just be like, oh, Croatia, that's like really interesting. Um, and then being at GW really helped me like get that internship at Croatia with the State Department because, you know, the guy calls you from the embassy and they're all intimately familiar with Foggy Bottom. So you already have like a very uh, solid basis to, to speak about and something to bond over immediately. So I would just double down on those two things in addition to what everyone else has said. Yeah, well, thank you so much. And it's wonderful to see that there is really a, just such a beautiful narrative around what GW offers students. I think you all have contributed to kind of building that for us in this session.